All right, guys, we're going to be starting the class in a few minutes. What we'll do is we'll, uh, while we're waiting for a few more stragglers to come in, we can open it up for questions. And uh, if anybody else comes stepping in, they can just grab a book out of the back. I got your cards because I'm going to be sending some additional information from the National Fire Safety Association. This class is getting recorded, so uh, everything you say will be held against your future knowledge. <laughs> uh, and we put these classes up online. At the end of this, I'll show you some classes, because usually at the end of one of these classes, I, I do what's called a downtown walk around. And I'll either take fire prevention or building inspectors, and we just go downtown. And we look around in the alleyways, we look up at the fire escape. But because we won't have time today, and if my internet connection is good here, we're actually going to just show you some of the some of the classes that uh, that we've been recording these are three to five minute little videos and it's just guys like you and gals like you that are out there and uh, we just basically look up and we uh, we train on, on what needs to be done so in this first part let's just talk and open it up what are some of the concerns uh, believe it or not some of you might even have stories that you've heard about or you witnessed where somebody got hurt on a fire escape either broke their feet broke their legs broke their arms fell through it uh, does anybody have any stories or anything that they uh, before I start clicking along on this, I, anything to share of this really, fire escape related? It's not really horrific, but it could happen. Oh. I wrote this one lady up for her fire escape, and of course she had all kinds of, oh, you know, it's so expensive and all of this, but she had it done. And it was a lucky thing she did because she found out that it wasn't as secure to the building that she figured because it was a, like a three, three or four family house. And over the years, because nobody's ever bothered to do it, that's what happened, but she had it fixed, so now she thanked me. Well, that's uh, one story, but we actually have some photographs of people that did fall on fire escapes we'll share with you today, yeah. so um, it's not, could it happen, it, it is happening, and we're going to show it to you at some of those photographs. Any other stories or any other concerns, because that's the two major issues, the fire escape outside and all its connections, and the unknown, how is it tied back into the building, and is it rotted, is it good? We're going to talk today about load tests. We're going to talk today about refurbishment and certification in lieu of a load test. And, uh, you know, it's one of the things we're going to be pushing today is, just so you guys know, we're not pushing load tests. So it's not, this is not a class that's just start load testing every fire escape. There's alternatives to load tests, which are very beneficial to everybody, including the clients. Uh, but in some rare, rare cases, there's going to be pristine fire escapes out there that the only thing you can do with that 25, 50, or 75-year-old fire escape is actually load test it. So we'll talk about that, but this is going to be a rare case. But any other stories? Anybody have any other concerns, uh, whether it be code-related, whether it be anything? Anybody have any other issues that they, even if it's, I don't know what to do with fire escapes. I mean, anybody have any other concerns with fire escapes? I'll tell you whether or not we're going to cover it today. The problem is the wells of the L stock on the bottom. We find a lot of the wells. The wells? The welding and the L stock that holds the bottom. Plate the anchor, yeah. The yeah, it's all. Yep, to we're going to cover that uh, because we're involved in a court case because of a weld. So uh, just so you know, 98% of all the fire escapes ever built in the United States are built with rivets and bolts. Every welded fire escape on the United States usually falls apart within its first 25 years. Well, it should be certified. Well, I, I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk about what what do you do with a weld. So just so you know, every fire escape you're going to run across, welding is going to be the least uh, uh, violation you're going to find. But in some rare cases where they were repairing it and they just left the, weld, the rust in there and they did a Mickey Mouse job, welding was the repair without a fire permit and all these other things. So we're going to cover that today and what, what we, how do we guarantee a weld for you from now on? And, there's a, and there's, a, there's a cure for that so we don't have to load test it or x-ray it. So we're going to talk about that. And anybody else have any other horror stories or anything else that they're concerned that we think we can answer today? Is welding legal? Yeah. Well, uh, well. It's legal if I have a brand new piece of steel today and I'm, and I'm welding it on a fire escape today and it's a brand new fire escape today and there's a fire permit today, right? I can weld all day long. Now, can I weld on a fire escape that's older than 1978 and the, and the EPA has deemed it to have lead? The answer is no. So all these old fire escapes, welding is no longer acceptable because the EPA says you're going to get a $35,000 fine because the fire escape has lead and you can't take an open torch to, a fire, to anything that has lead, including a welding rod, which is basically an open torch. So that's the paint though, right? Yeah, because of the paint issue. And that's why when you, so we're gonna cover all three situations here. The inspection and who's doing the right inspection, the repair and who's doing the right repair with permits, and the painting, who's painting it with an EPA renovator's license, which is required by the law now. 
We're also going to talk about the coordination between building departments, housing inspectors, and fire inspectors. Nationwide, about 40 states, fire prevention handles it all. In 10 out of 40 states, building departments handle the inspections of fire escapes. And in some states, it's the, it's the maintenance uh, code or the maintenance, uh, what we guys call housing inspectors that pick that stuff up. So I'm not here to tell you who's, who's right, who's wrong. Uh, a well, little bit about... Uh, you a little got bit. all three agencies here today. Well, all three, three, this is yeah. a great three actually <laughs> issued a violation yeah. in uh, Jersey City. But I like the building. Well, including the state. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the beauty. First of all, some of you asked about continuing ed credits. We've taught through Kane University at year. At, this is actually a six-hour course. Not today, but we've taught a six-hour course. I've taught at Sayreville, Bergen County, uh, uh, Camden. Okay, a six-hour continuing ed course. Right. And it got recorded and we put it up online. But... Uh, this, today is just a class that was put on by Matt. Oh, uh, we actually do classes every third week of the month somewhere in the United States, and I told him about this class, and he hijacked the class and says, dude, yeah, you're going to have it over here at Jersey City, so that's why we're here. If we were going to do this at a hotel, and he says, no, you're going to do it over here for, for the benefit of my people. Uh, Thanks, on. Matt. You're the best. He Thank said you. something about hotel. catered hotel. coffee, yeah. donuts, yeah. And, and fresh air. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's after this, but uh, you guys can discuss that with him, okay? Because right now I'm just okay. here. Yeah, it's 1 o'clock, so we're into brunch mode right now anyway. So <laughs> so the main thing that we're going to be talking about today, and this is the best, it's, it's, it's back and forth. I'm here to show you that there's three codes. And they're already support. We're not changing any codes. The codes are, you, there's been a misinterpretation of all the codes. You give me any code and I'll show you where it says you have a lot more power than you realized you, you had before. And there's three people that need to be controlled because they haven't been controlled. So if you can imagine fire escapes being painted, do I need a permit to paint a fire escape? So I will paint the fire escape till the day, I'm uh, till the day I die and that's why there's no permits being pulled on fire escape repair because they're claiming there is no repairs, they were just painting them. Now how can you just be painting a 75 year old structure? So well, that is going to go away. That these certificates that just show up by a structural engineer, man, it's impossible that all they needed was a paint job. You change one bolt, do I need a permit? The answer is yes. You're touching its structure, you need that. So believe me, you're going to touch a lot more bolts than just one bolt. But this is where the perfect storm of stupidity has happened. You guys will write violations that say what? Scrape, prime, I mean scrape and paint your fire escape. Guess what happens when I get a call? I get a call from somebody that said, hey, I got a violation from one of my inspectors. And it's, uh, I'll read the violation to you. It says, scrape and paint the fire escape. How much for you to paint the fire escape? Oh, well, ma'am, sir, uh, you have to have an inspected structure. No, 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 no. I just want you to give me a price to scrape and paint it. And the dangling tread, I had my Uncle Charlie take care of the dangling tread back up. I just want a price to script. As, as I try to educate them more and more, they hang the phone up on me. So guess who's been fixing fire escapes for the past 50 to 75 years? Has it been ornamental line work guys? Has it been welding guys? Has it been Joe Painter, right. who's part-time landscaper? Up. Or is it full-time landscaper, part-time painter? It doesn't matter. Those are the guys. And because of that, what are we getting? We're getting the gray-haired guys in the fire departments telling the guys with dark, shiny hair, in case of fire, don't use that. See? This is, this is what's told to everybody. So a lot of building department guys don't know this, a lot of uh, housing don't know that right now the fire department is the in, the, it's not on doc. you can't find it on a document. You got that on a document somewhere that says in case of fire, never use the fire escape? You can't, the liability would be huge. But that's the N word. You're like, guys, these things are a piece of crap. Don't get on them. It'll end up killing you. And it does. So today's job is to show you that the building code, the fire code, the NFPA all say the same thing. So by going back and telling you that the code already says what you need it to say so you can write the right violation, the next thing you're going to talk about is how you're going to write the proper violation is that repair paint test. That's all you'll ever write on any violation you'll ever go to. You're right. Repair it, paint it, test it. All of a sudden now, these, pe these people are not going to go anywhere. And we've got documents in your, in your hands that are called uh, fire escape confidence test. It's a, like a final exam for a building inspector, I mean uh, for a, uh, an engineer. We'll cover that too. So let's go on, let's start with the, uh, 
Let's start right here first and make sure that everybody agrees with the codes. Because you guys are all about codes. Let's start with the International Fire School. This is your 1028.6, correct? Fire department, you write uh, testing and certification. Any fire escape system found to be in a state of deterioration or unsafe shall be repaired immediately. Is that a correct statement? Is that 1028.6? Perfect, then you immediately move into depending upon structural condition, a load test shall be conducted. Who determines what depending on structural condition means? See, right there, this is great. It's not the engineer. Depending upon the structural condition, a load test shall be conducted. Who determines that? Do you think an engineer is going to force his client into a load test, a very expensive three, five, ten thousand dollar load test? Oh, so this is why we're asking. Who decides if you've been satisfied on what this is called depending upon structural condition? So it's not engineers. He's just performing. The same way you guys get all talked about when it comes to sprinkler systems, alarm systems, change of use in a the building, they all come and sit down with you and, and create a plan. Fire escapes are the same plan. This is the only second piece of egress, not only for your tenants. Tenants use it to, vac uh, to evacuate, self-evacuate. They don't need your help. And you guys need to use this in case all hell breaks loose. Guess what you guys are going to use to get out of that building? So the low test shall be the, the, the uh, authority having jurisdiction. Well, see, let's see if it says that anywhere else. The NFPA Life Safety Code, 1001.7. I taught two or three classes before I finally somebody gave me this code because I couldn't find it anywhere in the book. We don't use it. And here it is. Well, again, it's, sometimes it's referenced. Ready? The authority having jurisdiction shall be permitted to approve any existing fire escape system that has been shown by a low test or other satisfactory evidence of strength to have adequate strength. So who's the authority here? And what's the first thing they want before you even give them other adequate, uh, other satisfactory evidence? What's the NFPA go right for? Low test. But then they have this or, and the or is other satisfactory evidence, meaning somebody on the outside is going to go beyond <clears throat> to prove to you that we don't want to do a low test here, that the fire escape has had significant refurbishment to it to avoid the low test. Let's take a look at the International Building Code. Testing and certification. All exterior fire escape systems shall be examined or tested and or certified for structural adequacy every five years. Depending on the state, it's either every year or every five years. So does the building code, the International Building Code, support the International Fire Code? Does it have the same statement? Because they have examined and or tested. That means a load test. And But then they also say certified. What's the word certified mean? That's the other evidence of strength. So. Again, I told you, this is not a low test class. We're going to talk about low test. We're going to show you what low test is. It's simpler than anybody can ever imagine. It's just putting weight on top of a platform. What can you use? Sand, water, bricks, lead bricks. You can put anything. I'll, get, I'll go over a low test criteria with you. It's not that complicated. Question. Do we do it? No. 1028.6, that doesn't give you an award. It only gives you a low test. Yeah, it does. It says. The, depending upon structural condition, a low test shall be conducted. Depending is your other evidence of strength. So, depending on the condition, who determines the condition of that fire escape? Well, we do. Yeah, because uh, an engineer came in and said, hey, it's good, man. Like, okay. Well, that doesn't give it an option of accepting an other test in addition to Yeah, well, the way I read it, if, does anybody else read it? It says, depending on the condition, you make the final determination. You can order a low test, or you've been satisfied. So, the same thing, if I show you other evidence of strength, will you avoid the load test? Well, it says your code says you can. Otherwise, if you get some fly-by-night engineer that's not really taking this thing seriously, and they just threw a, a paint job on the fire escape, what can you order? And it's one of the best engineering firms in the country. You know, they spent, the guy spent $6,000 with that engineering firm. Yet you, you know, from the class that you've got today, you're like, I don't believe, that. I don't think this thing's done. I got, I got evidence of rust still in the connections. What can you order that the code says you can order, depending on the structural condition? You weren't satisfied, what do you order? You order a load test. So all these people throwing paint jobs on their fire escape, then bringing in the structural engineer? You say, dude, I want to see the load test. And you want to be there or not? You want to witness the, the collapse of the fire escape? Yeah, I'd like Okay, so now that we do, so we agree, 
the three codes, I'm gonna repeat this code several times throughout. Do you agree that we're not changing any code, it already exists? Both it's supported both by the fire code, the building code, and the NFPA all say, a fire, uh, uh, the authority having jurisdiction, and in some states, it's the building department, shall accept by load test or other evidence of strength. The other evidence of strength, believe it or not, is a full refurbishment. Now we were talking about this. A roof on a residential or commercial, does it change, does it get swapped out every 25 to 50 years on average? Do you change the roof out? The last 100 years, the roof? Roof shingles. <laughs> well, the point that I was trying to make is that these firescapes have been out there for 50, 75, some 100 years, and they've not seen any bolt changes on them ever other than a paint job. And that paint job came every 25 years when it was fully rusted and you, find, and you guys finally come in. I'm going to show you and prove to you today on a case that we did for a fireman here in New York that all rust, all rusty fire escapes start at a connection and then eat the rest of the paint job on the surface. So if I, if I can prove to you today that all, you walk up to a rusty fire escape that the initial fire escape rusted from the inside out, will you then have a, an opinion that all these connections are suspect? If I prove from a court case that all rust starts inside out. Firescapes don't rust from the outside in, they rust from the inside out. Point and throw. Say again? Point and throw. Right, so where you expose, then they never, they never cover. So we're gonna cover that. So let's talk about a couple things that uh, really makes people worry. Now these are actual situations out there. But right now, firefighters are taking down the ladders and rolling up the hoses. But earlier in the night when they pulled up, there were flames coming out of the side of the building. Firefighters say it was one of the scarier moments because when you pull up to a building and you see children and mothers hanging off the side of the fire escape, smoke swirling around them, they said that's scary, scary stuff. They got up there, they got the ladders up, and they said nobody got hurt. The uh, fire escape, there was uh, three or four people hanging off the fire escape. They couldn't get off. They were just on the fire escapes. I had people hanging in the fire escapes at the rear of the building. And on this side of the building, they, we had a bunch of people on that fire escape. Well, about 50 people were displaced inside this building. Our firefighters say there's good news tonight. It looks like everybody will be allowed to go back in except the one unit where the fire was in. They said that's good luck to them tonight. I'm Bob Wilson on the scene of Bridgeport, News 8. Now, the great thing about that uh, piece uh, that was, that's not, that's not even six months old, Bridgeport. Uh, 50 families, right? Big complex and children trapped on a fire escape. People trapped on a fire escape. So was this a firefighter or a rescue mission? It's a rescue. First thing you do, you get to any building. You got people, you get them first. Then you fight the fire second, right? So while they're getting all these people off the fire escape, fire escape, you can get off fire escapes yourself. Anybody see that eight-year-old child? Be your daughter, that could be your granddaughter. She's jumping off a fire escape herself because the ladder wouldn't come down. And most of these ladders are 12 to 14 feet off the ground. Why wouldn't it come down? Why rusted in place. Rusted in place, the weight balances are not working, but there's a fire. What's that, what's that little girl doing? She's saving her own life. <laughs> and so when the firemen got there, how did they get all these people off the fire escape? Using the ladders that were there? Or bringing all the trucks, get all the ladders off the truck, get all these people off the my God, you know how much time? And this one, like the guy said at the end, we were lucky, you know, nobody died. The smoke, the flames, and the frightened faces, all in a firefighter's line of duty. But Chief William Hitchcock remembers the night it wasn't the fire that almost stopped him. Oh, I was scared to death. <laughs> but the fire escape that broke underneath him. Where the railing just came away from the building. And our investigation found across Massachusetts, more unsafe fire escapes. Rusty, deteriorating, crumbling, broken. And what state officials didn't know, the system they set up to keep fire escapes safe is also falling apart. The potential ramifications are disastrous. So let's look at this one. This expert iron worker is licensed to build, maintain, and inspect fire escapes. So then over here? For months, we examined dozens of them with alarming results. Looking at this today, would this pass inspection? No. In dormitories, at theaters, at homes, and apartment buildings. Rust is actually eating away the metal of the Correct. fire escape. Correct. And the bottom line? It'll get weak and then eventually it'll fall. This one has rotted connections. 
This one, missing bolts, twisted metal. Would the stairs come down? No, never come down. This one, a broken tread. So how dangerous is it for the people inside this building? This fire escape is definitely going to put somebody either in the hospital or it's going to put somebody at a... Uh, in a cemetery. Fire escapes are so critical. The state building code requires they be certified for structural adequacy and safety every five years. But our investigation found that safeguard is simply being ignored. Here's proof. We chose fire escapes at random in Boston, Somerville, Cambridge, Worcester, and here in Quincy. We checked building department files, but there's no fire escape certification. Not in this file. To see if building owners had submitted their mandatory inspection reports. But there's no certification in this one either. Right. Bottom line, not one we checked in Quincy had been certified as safe. And the director of inspectional services admitted because of staffing shortages, the city has no idea how many other fire escape owners are breaking the rules. And as a result, do you know how many fire escapes in your city are safe? Or not? Well, I don't know. In Worcester, not one we checked was certified. In Somerville, no. Nope. Four more fire escapes. Did it fall through the cracks? Yeah. Not one up to date certification. And again, no system for keeping track. I, How can they get away with that? Be, I guess that the shortest answer of all is because we don't have the resources to sit here and follow up on these things. If structural deficiencies are reported, local building inspectors can actually evacuate residents until repairs are made. Would you talk to us on camera about this? No. But when we surveyed two dozen more communities, most admitted they had no idea how many fire escapes were certified. In Taunton, inspectors told us they haven't seen a certification in 25 years. Northampton officials said it's a cold day in hell when that happens. In Cambridge, too, not one of our test buildings was certified, and the official in charge would not come out to discuss it. In Boston, where there are more than 8,000 fire escapes, again, according to inspectional services, not one we checked was certified. Officials know they are required to enforce the building code, but they admit they don't always know if owners are breaking the law. The building code is being ignored. Right, but it's difficult to write a violation when you don't have knowledge of something like that. But state officials say for a critical issue like this, communities should know. And they warn the Massachusetts building code is not optional. Does it worry you that these fire escapes are not being certified? This is an important issue and should not be ignored. That's because after the smoke and flames begin, it'll be too late to learn you've got no way out. I can't stress it enough, Hank, that these things have to be maintained and, and someone's got to be watching. As a result of our investigation, state officials will now issue an alert to local inspectors. Meanwhile, if there's a fire escape on your home or office, you can contact your local building department to make sure it's properly certified. In the newsroom, I'm Hank Phillippe Ryan. because we don't have the resources to sit here and follow up on these things. If structural deficiencies are reported, local building inspectors can actually evacuate residents until repairs are made. Would you talk to us on camera about this? No. But when we surveyed two dozen more communities, most admitted they had no idea how many fire escapes were certified. In Taunton, inspectors told us they haven't seen a certification in 25 years. Northampton officials said it's a cold day in hell when that happens. In Cambridge, too, not one of our test buildings was certified, and the official in charge would not come out to discuss it. In Boston, where there are more than 8,000 fire escapes, again, according to inspectional services, not one we checked was certified. Officials know they are required to enforce the building code, but they admit they don't always know if owners are breaking the law. The building code is being ignored. Right, but it's difficult to write a violation when you don't have knowledge of something like that. But state officials say for a critical issue like this, communities should know. And they warn the Massachusetts building code is not optional. Does it worry you that these fire escapes are not being certified? This is an important issue and should not be ignored. That's because after the smoke and flames begin, it'll be too late to learn you've got no way out. I can't stress it enough, Hank, that these things have to be maintained and, and someone's got to be watching. As a result of our investigation, state officials will now issue an alert to local inspectors. Meanwhile, if there's a fire escape on your home or office, you can contact your local building department to make sure it's properly certified. 
in the newsroom. I'm Hank Phillippe Ryan. So, you can make that for any city in the United States, East Coast, West Coast, Chicago to Texas. It's the same situation. I take a quick look at this book, and I'll tell you what happened in Boston. <coughs> for them to change. This was in back in '72. That's the back. So if you ever want to use that photograph to remind you of who Firescapes, there's a, it's a double-edged sword. Firescapes can save lives or take them. And in this case, it actually took this woman. This one, a Pulitzer Prize winning photograph. And um, the fireman survived. He grabbed the fire ladder with one hand as the rest of the fire escape fell away. Her niece landed on her, but she died. Okay? So fire escapes, are, which are made to save tenants or firemen, almost took everybody in this particular case here. So that's what everybody's worried about, the collapse of a fire escape. Well, how do you get that? How do you get that to be a guarantee that it's not going to occur? This is why firemen don't get on fire escapes. There needs to be a sort of a, some sort of national program. Now, it, this is how it's going to happen. Do you guys remember when sprinkler systems, 25, 35 years ago, you could have a building with, with or without a sprinkler system active, with or without an alarm system working correctly? It all depends where you left the envelope. That I mean, this is from the past, right? Today, can, is there any building that can stay active with a, with a dead sprinkler system? So, at, so the focus on it is huge because finally the awareness came along. Fire escapes is the same thing. We're not going to change this overnight. It's going to take three to five years. There's an awareness program. And one of the things we're, we're going to cover is imagine that over the next three to five years, all you wanted to do in your city was put a tag on the fire escape and gave it its status. It was either a status that when you got there, there was dangling treads, you put a red tag on it. If it was needs repair because it just looked rusty to you, you put a yellow tag on it. And if it was in pristine condition, it got a white tag I put on it by a private individual, which such as a structural engineer or a fire escape engineer, right? What would that do for firemen fighting fires in the middle of the night? Because they know the condition and shape. They know the immediate condition of the fire escape. What would that do for tenants in the building paying rent to the landlord? We could use it as a... I'm looking out my window and I got a red tag that's double-sided and I'm saying fire escape is out of service. Who am I going to call? If I get a yellow one that says Firescape has deficiencies, who am I going to call? Well, you already got the fire department. You guys are the ones that put it there. But if you put a red sticker on it, you almost have to back evacuate. Well, that's a whole different story. We'll cover that. But let's say we're on a yellow, and I'm a tenant. I look out the thing, and I see a yellow sticker my on my rent. fire escape, and I'm, I'm not paying the... pay my rent. There you go. I'm not going to pay my rent. That's it. It's either I'm not going to pay because of the cockroaches in the building, or my fire escape is out of service, yeah, yeah. or the other. I'm going to so, put an escrow until it's fixed. Exactly. So there's the, there's the pressure. And all you've done was put a tag on it, a conditional tag on it. So we're going to talk about today. Let's talk about everything we're going to cover today. Ready? What is fire escapes? What type of fire escapes there are? I'm going to cover today what's just called the Departmental Procedures and Guidelines. Matt, we gave you one of these, didn't we? For you guys to, to test drive and see. Repair, repair guidelines, so we're going to demystify the whole thing about what, how do you fix fire escapes or not. We're going to talk about how fire escapes are put together, and they haven't changed in 100 years. Okay? So that's all that we're going to cover today, quickly, because we only have so much time, I have to sort of go bullet train through this thing here, right? I'm going to show you what drawings look like. Is somebody supposed to draw something for you? We'll show you what drawings look like, so that way you know what to expect. We're going to show you also... A typical confidence test. We designed this confidence test for the city of Seattle and Tacoma. It's on their website. This is the national model for a confidence test. This is the, the exam for the engineer who has to write. When you read some of these questions, no longer can an engineer give you a, a disclaimer letter. It says, to the best of my information, knowledge, and belief, the fire escape is structurally sound and has been kept painted today. What's that mean for tomorrow? Can you drag him to court? To the best of my information, knowledge, and belief, today, the fire escape is structurally sound that has been kept painted. Can you drag me to court tomorrow? Yes. No. It's a disclaimer letter. It's an opinion letter. You asked me for my opinion today. I got paid 300 bucks. There's my opinion. If you want an opinion a month from now, call me, and I'll give you another $300 opinion. Otherwise, does the doctor say, you look good today. You should last at least five years? Or does he say, come back in five years and see me again? So the last thing we're going to talk about is what should be proper inspection procedures that include photographs. Everybody's got digital cameras. For them to start writing you reports without photographs, 
We're going to talk about the EPA and the lead law and how you can't scrape or paint and weld on fire escapes anymore. We're going to talk about the classes and we're going to talk about credentials that people have to start giving you that are going to be fixing fire escapes in your area because guess what? If there's a million fire escapes in the entire United States, guess what we don't have enough of? Inspectors. Guess what you have plenty of? Repair guys. Who are the repair guys? Ornamental iron workshops. They'll repair these fire escapes. <coughs> welding guys, even though they're not going to light up their welding trucks, they have the tools they need to change all these bolts. So there's plenty of people to fix these fire escapes. Inspectors is all the structural engineers who need two to five thousand dollars to inspect your fire escape. So if you have a fire escape inspector, how much do they normally charge? A lot less. So there's not a lot of inspectors out there. Okay? That's why we started the we just founded the National Firescape Association to basically create a place where you can go get knowledge, go get information, and in the future hopefully get certified as a firescape inspector or a um, firescape mechanic. But in the future, when you look out at there, there's only two licenses, and I'll cover that, in the United States that lets you touch firescapes today as an inspector. Boston has a G3 license, and California has a Reg 4 certification license to touch firescapes. Every other state didn't think there was going to be a need. Okay? So now let's, uh, questions so far? Have, have anything that you guys have heard so far? No? Let's talk about live load tests where people did die. Ready? We've got this fire escape here where a woman fell five stories for, from her death because her boyfriend used to live, uh, live in this apartment. He would cross over the roof. They had a nice roof deck on the neighbors. And so him and his girlfriend would go there and drink at 2, 3, 4 in the morning. Except the phone rang. Somebody was calling. And she decided to get the phone. Maybe half tipsy. We don't know. But guess where she missed the uh, missing rail? See the missing rail right there? Guess where she went? Boom. Boom. Straight down there. Court case. Here's another case where people were selling a building. So we had the, the seller and the real estate agent, the buyer and the real estate agent, and one of the condo association guys on a fire escape that looks like um, that one over there, and the one I'm on is three of a kind, and they were on, the fire escape was right there. And as they're looking at the roof, because the guy who owned the building before he condoed it, fixed, him and his son fixed the, the roof, did he put all the bolts back? Everybody fell, nobody died. <coughs> Grab your phone, dial, who you dial, first dial is? Call your lawyer first. You have your lawyer call 911. Because everybody's in a lawsuit. Because they fell only 10 to 12 feet. All right? Now this could have been a fireman just walking up there to check the situation. You'll never walk on a fire escape after this inspection. Not because I'm telling you not to walk on them. You don't need to. There's enough evidence from a fire escape that you can see from a door and from the ground. You can look up at a fire escape and you're going to be looking for evidence of maintenance. Otherwise, you see nothing but original hardware on a 50 to 75 year old structure and there's not one new hex head bolt, do you need to get on that fire escape? You've got all the evidence you need to write a violation that says three words, repair, paint, test. Can I eliminate the test word at the end? I can, when you come to me, I'll either test it or I'm going to, you give me other evidence of strength, what do I do to that word test? Can you not load test that fire escape? Can you give the order not to load test? Otherwise, the code already says for you to, it's an automatic. I wanted you to repair it, which involves getting an inspector. I want you to paint it, which requires the maintenance code, and then I want you to test it. Because if you spot repair a fire escape, what always comes after a spot repair? I change 10 bolts and I leave behind 50 to 75 year old squares and rivets. Do you want an opinion letter from me after I finish out filling out my confidence test? You want an opinion? Or you want a, you want a guarantee? So if I spot repair any fire escape anywhere, a couple of welds here, which you know I illegally did it without my fire permit and the EPA never caught me, I changed a couple of tread bolts, and I left everything else original. So spot repair means what to you? Always. On every fire escape you run across. <coughs> Load test. They said, please, I don't want to load test. That's $3,000, $5,000, $8,000, $12,000 more. What can you tell them? Do a full refurb. You should, do the re you should do the full refurb, which, by the way, you should have had this done 25 to 50 years ago anyway, and you avoid the load test. What's the average load cycle for after a fire escape gets refurbished, fully refurbished, and there's no load test this year? Five years from now, how long before I have to load test that fire escape after I had a full refurb this year? What's the average industry standard cycle? 
25 years. So for 25 years, every time I inspect five years from now, which I still have to inspect every five, I come back to you, I keep providing you other evidence of strain. Say, hey, the thing's been kept painted, all the connections are sealed with silicone, all the tie backs into the building are still looking good, and by the way, five years ago, dude, we refurbished this whole thing. Here's the photograph. I'm like, oh, no low test. Fine. So the average fire escape out there gets their bolts rechanged every 25 years, or to, depending where they live, you know, near the ocean or not, whatever. So for 20 to 25 years, load test is not even going to be a concern. So what's better for a client? Load test today and then five years from now, load test again and five years from then, load test again or refurb today. But you're going to get some people that are going to have a pristine fire escape, 10 story pristine fire escape, all the bolts are tight, square head bolts are good, rivets are good, and they got a few minor things, readjust the cantilever and that's it. What's the only answer for them? Load test. Five years from now, what's the only answer? Load test. So load test every now and then will come into play when somebody has only a few minor re repairs, whether or not the client at that time says, you know, what's my spot repair and my load test? I'm just using numbers right now. Oh, but your spot repair and load test is going to cost you 15 grand. What's my total refurb and avoid the load test for the next 25 years? 20 grand. Some clients will look at that and say, you know what, I'm going to bite the bullet this year and, and just get the full refurb on this simply because I'm going to get every connection cleaned out. All my bolts are going to change out. I'm going to get them silicone and sealed anyway with 50 year silicone. I'm going to get new tie backs into the building and I'm not going to have to deal with a load test, which this year was going to cost me eight grand as an example. Five years from now, it's going to cost me 10 grand, 12 grand. So some people will start doing the, you know, the whole seesaw thing and as to what. You'll never decide what they're going to do. Can you ever tell them to spot and load test or full refurb? Can you ever force them into one, one of those? No, they pick. Can they do anything but that? When you write a violation, can they do anything but spot repair it and load test it or refurbish it, no load test? Can they do anything else? That's not, that's not what the law says. So, I was in Iowa, I'm involved in a case in Iowa. Three kids, two guys and a girl were watching fireworks. The fire escape was put back by the maintenance guys who forgot to put in the through bolt. Instead of putting in the through bolt, they put in that lag screw back in the hole. They all fell to the ground, boom, boom, blood on the ground, crippled. <laughs> This looks like the leg for the staircase. back and they put the, they were so in, un, insecure of themselves they even put a leg on it, a leg right into the asphalt shingle, no no base to it, you know. And down at the corner where there was a hole holding it because it wrapped the corner, there was a hole there, we were able to go back there and lift it and walk it back out again because they didn't even reattach it back down here. And this whole thing fell to the ground and, and they carted it off to a field eight, eight blocks away and then they just put it back and so court cases, everybody keeps getting sued. Live load testing. Several examples of live load testing, right? You guys remember this in the old days when air conditioning, uh, remember? Uh, now this is very popular. Oh, it's a parade? Let's put as many people as we can on these rotten fire escapes, right? Um, this is your situation. You guys get this all the time. People say, hey, in case of fire, never use a fire escape. Hell no, man. When all hell breaks loose, guess what you guys jump on? You have no choice. Uh, emergency situations happens all the time. You know what I'm saying? Are you guys able to see? All right. Um, and uh, believe it or not, even in our field, this is actually not the picture of one of my uh, guys that I work with out of Chicago. His dad fell seven stories doing exactly this. That's not his dad, but that's seven stories. You know, oh, fix, fix, boom, seven stories down. So it gets everybody. These are like little hand grenades. Another live load testing, you know, not too many parties in some of these buildings, is there? Interaction between buildings, a lot of the uh, fraternities or the uh, the housing for colleges, they don't do this, do they? Summertime cookouts. Summertime cookouts, they don't do that, right? How about that one over there? How about people now are making it, you know, common to take a picture on a fire escape with a wedding? Imagine, hey, my wife, 
Got to get a new wife. I don't know. And college students who are not allowed to smoke inside the building, where they smoke? Fire escapes. So that's all live load testing, right? And uh, let's talk about who inspects in, uh, in the country. All the codes allow structural engineers to inspect the fire escape. The next one is they sometimes allow civil engineers. The next one is they allow architects in some states to inspect. A lot of them think city officials inspect. They say, oh, the city officials have been here every year and they've never said anything. Why are you picking on my fire escape? Because they write violations they don't inspect. They write violations. Well, oh, no, you're crazy. Get the hell out of here. And, you know, we get this all the time. And fire escape inspectors. Two licenses, Boston license, California license. I have both. Okay? One's building department issued once. But there's no national fire escape inspector's license. That's why we started the National Fire Escape Association, not only to house all this knowledge that we have out there, but also to start some standardization to say people can go basically test, become a, a certified fire escape mechanic and a certified fire escape inspector. Let's take a look at this. Let's talk about opinions versus load tests. This is actually in Fort Lee. This is a, a lot of people don't realize, but in the 1900s, during the, during the talkies and during the uh, silent movie era, the Hollywood was Fort Lee. One of the biggest places for a lot of the a lot of the movies was in this in this property that I'm at. The reason I got called to this property to inspect it is because they had an engineer stamp, not an engineer stamp, they had an engineer report that the secretary got, not you guys. And she goes, Man, I don't know what this guy's doing. He's telling me to give it a paint job and fix a tread. But I think there's bigger problem. This is a secretary concerned about. And this building now is used as storage only. So we went there and looked at the fire escape, but just as your opinion, pass or fail the fire escape? You think it has any structural issues? Okay, so we got a report that came. Because we said, sure, I'll go, I'll go by and take a look. That's me inspecting the building. And thank God it was a white one. White one, is, I actually took all my photographs high res because we use this as a, as a case study. Whenever you get this much rust built up somewhere, you can use it. Um, this is the letter that we got from the structural engineer. And it's hard to read, but it basically says there's a few things he wants you to do. He wants you to fix the broken tread, bent, there's a bent piece of flat somewhere on one of the platforms, give it a good scraping and a painting, and he'll come back and sign off on it. And there's a, this, this is the disclaimer, that you know this wasn't a critical examination, and this was just a, a cursory visual over, overview. So what was gonna happen? What, this is how big the thing is. We condemned it that day. This is my inspector. Look at all the photographs that I shot. And then when I did hammer testing, all kinds of things were falling in. So, is this really a contest about who's better? Am I better than this guy? Or is it that there's, since there's no standard of inspection, you can basically do whatever you want to do? <coughs> and, since, and since this was a paint job, how do you think this fire escape was going to get fixed? With a permit or no permit? No. Right? Because the guy said one tread, one flat thing. I'm not going to pull a permit for that, right? So 75 years, guys, this has been happening. Uh, you get caught at a fire escape working on it, and somebody comes in. I don't care what official shows up. You know what you tell them? Just paint it. We're just painting it. Because, <coughs> and if they're really good, I've got this violation from Mary Gray. From Mary, she said right here. Scrape the paint. She didn't say structural. So we're scraping and painting it. I didn't know you needed to get a permit. You better talk with Mary because she doesn't know what she's doing. That's how they've been getting 75 years nationwide. This is what they've been doing. All because Fire Prevention and Building Department wrote in their violation, scrape and paint your fire escape. Does anywhere there say, go get an inspection first, and then scrape and paint it? Go get it professionally evaluated, then scrape and paint it? Do you see the flaw? <laughs> the little hole that everybody was hiding in. You guys are getting fire escapes that are 50 to 75 years old. The only thing they've been, is probably got, they've gotten two, three paint jobs in their lifetime. They get painted every 20 to 25 years. And only when you get caught. Nobody does preventive maintenance. <coughs> so, so this one was for me, right? I was in Chicago just recently, so this is a recent update, right? And the guy, I was like, oh, you have an engineer. And this engineer says, scrape and paint it. Fix a couple things, scrape and paint it. On this complex that has 150 apartments. And these 150 apartments are all serviced with these kind of things. The uniqueness about this is that there's a, 
there's a bracket, it's reverse bracketed, so from the wall comes this bracket that comes down and grabs the, the corners, you know, the front ends, right? And I said, well, I'll give you a bid on it, but let me walk the thing first and just get a general idea, because then I'll speak with your engineer, and I'll say, hey, I found some other things or not, and agree or disagree with this. I walked the fire escape, and I found these things. You know those broads that come down? That's them right there. Are those passable? Every one of the fire escapes, the rods were all equal. So I photographed them. They, uh, I kind of disagree with your engineer. It's like, did he even walk these things? Treasure full of rust. Major rust everywhere. Says, oh, no, no, very good. It's a professional firm there. Dude, I don't care how professional they are. I'm not going to paint this thing. I'm worried about my men even getting on it. That was 150 apartment units. And all six fire escapes were, I condemned them. So you do your thing, you make your phone calls, and to this day they haven't done anything with it yet. So again, because there's no standard of inspection, <coughs> what happens? Everybody's kind of relying and waiting for something to happen because nobody knows what the guidelines are. The guidelines are repair, paint, test. As soon as you write a violation and somebody says, I got a violation from you, and it says repair, paint, test. I think they're going to ask you what the word repair means. Repair what? Right? Repair what? Because they're waiting for you to tell them that one tread and that one bolt. They'll fix that one tread and that one bolt. So when they say, well, fix what? Well, what am I going to repair? says, I, I'm not going to tell you what to repair. I need you to have it professionally evaluated. Isn't that what's going to happen? Because they're going to call you because you wrote a violation. What's repair mean? What do you say? I don't know. That's why you need to have it professionally evaluated. A report will be generated that I will been, then receive, and me and your engineer are going to go over a game plan for you of what we're going to do about this fire escape. But I don't know what to repair, but I know that it's in disrepair. There's so much surface rust on this thing. I know that you got structural problems. Please have your professional evaluator, your engineer of record, give me a report. Tell me what's wrong with this thing. Okay, what's the word paint? Paint means that you've got an old fire escape here, and EPA says you can't just go out there and scrape it and, and blow uh, the dust chips everywhere. They have to have an EPA renovator license, person that's going to collect all your chips and make sure that when you scrape and paint that fire escape, they're doing that as per EPA guidelines. <coughs> and anybody nowadays will take that $175 class on a weekend, eight hours later, you have half, a half intelligence, you'll walk out of there with a certificate. It just tells you how to handle and, and collect you know, leaded paint chips and do it legally without getting fined. What about the repair guy? Well, your repair guy can't do a damn thing until the engineer of record has come to me with a game plan as to whether we're gonna spot repair it and load test it, or we're gonna refurbish it to avoid the load test, and then you, he needs to take that report and go apply for permit at inspectional services. Because inspectional services is no longer taking, yeah, I'm gonna go repair a fire escape. Okay, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna repair it. Where's your report? of what you're going to do. So then the report that you have authorized from the engineer of record is now attached to the permit application at the building department and says, I'm being watched by Joe Engineering, and here's the report, and here's my permit, and then they proceed with the repairs under permit. Now eyeballs are watching, so does that landscaper, painter, ornamental guy now going to have workers' comp and liability? If he doesn't, can he do this? So only professional guys can start doing this repairs, and that is the, we already have them there, they're already, they're ready to work, their shops are idle right now, which is ornamental line work guys, how many in Jersey City? A few, right? How many welding guys with the welding machine on the back of the truck, which sadly they're not gonna use, but they have all the other tools necessary to fix the fire escape. How many welding guys running around the city? So we have an army ready to fix these? Right? Now, we even have an army of inspectors. How many structural engineers will inspect this correctly if we give them that confidence test to fill out at the end and at the beginning that has all those questions? Structural engineers, they know what they're doing. So they just got to be given a standard of some kind, okay? We got rust. This is the detention center for juveniles, 17 and younger. That's okay. One story. Just needs paint. <laughs> so when you first walk up to a, a rusty fire escape, by the time you get surface rust on a fire escape, every piece of that rust came from an internal connection. Okay? So now, this is what you look like when you stick your nose underneath that very same stairs. 
Okay? This is what rust looks like when it starts building. In our case that we did for the, for the fireman, a quarter inch of rust takes 25 years of unchecked growth <coughs> to grow a quarter inch. When you, got fit, when you got a half an inch, that's almost 50 years of unchecked growth. Now that's proven in a court case by a metallurgist who will take the weather patterns for the past 50 years and he'll tell you how long it took that rust to grow. And that's what we have to do in that case. So, but the rule of thumb is a quarter inch takes 25 years of, of unchecked growth. Nobody, no paint on it. So, when I tell you guys, when you start looking for a Farscape inspection, you're going to be looking for original hardware. And if you see it, it's 50 to 75 years old, is it suspect? You got rust in the connection, is that suspect? You're down on the ground looking up, you see no evidence of maintenance, no new hex head bolts, nothing but rivets and square heads. Do you want to get on it? You get on it, this is what occurred. You got a tread waiting for you, so it's a hand grenade. Now, depending on how you go up this fire escape, if you go up and fall through this tread, you fall backwards. You scrape, break something. You go down a fire escape and you put your foot through. You snap your knee in what direction? In the forward direction. And you go back to work ever? Or are you going to have a slight limp for the rest of your life when you break your knee forward? So. This is why you're never going to get on a fire escape anymore. We walked up with the new hammer tests. Okay, I think that's it. Am I staying down here? So I'm going to get hurt. And what I'll do now is I have my red. And I'll highlight it in red. To say that this is... Now, that's what traps you guys going up. You guys want to gingerly or not paying attention or going down. You step on the tread the wrong way, your foot goes through, your body motion is still forward, what's going to happen to you? You're going to snap your knee forward going down, you're going to snap your knee backwards going up, you have a better chance of breaking the tread going up. <coughs> That's what you have to worry about. So you don't need to get on these fire escapes to see that there's been no maintenance over 50 to 75 years. Got it? I'm good. This is going to come up to a couple of times. Every fire escape, your international fire code, 1028.6 says what? Depending on Structural condition. Who gets the final say whether a load test is coming? Every fire escape that's going to be spot repaired automatically gets what? Because the code says what? And because they spot repaired it and they left behind rivets and square head bolts, what are you automatically uh, issuing? Only because even if that bolt and that rivet is pristine and tight and you can whack it with a hammer and do all kinds of things, it's old. Why are you load testing it? Because it's old. That's the only reason you're load testing is because we haven't even gone into the attachment into the buildings. That's coming in. 97, 98% of all fire ships you can see from the outside of a building. It's right there. You can see everything. But the only reason you are, somebody spot repairs a fire escape and they leave behind original hardware that is good to excellent, guys. And they fully painted it. Why are you load testing it after they spot repaired it? Because it's old. That's it. You're only doing it because it's old. And you haven't even answered the final pieces. How is it in, into the building? Does anybody have x-ray eyes seeing what's going on in the building? Though it's been raining in the parapet wall, coming down between the two veneers and stuff for 75 years. Do you know what that is? Well, that's what the load test is going to tell you. So the load test is because something is old, that's good to excellent. That's why you load test it. That's your guarantee. But then that load test also sees if it's still ready to rip out of the building. Because now we're going to try to avoid the ripping out of the building. Because what do you think it's going to cost on average to take out a few bricks around the connection with a mason and then repack it back after we've verified it? Is it fair to say it's going to cost anywhere from 250 bucks to 500 bucks per connection? to take it away, you know, open it up and then put it all back. How about if I tell you that I can replace a connection, leave the original one that looked good to me to begin with, I let sleeping dogs lie, and I drill a hole five inches away, three quarters, I drill it eight to 12 inches deep, and I put a new epoxy bolt in there, healthy epoxy bolt, and then I mechanically fasten this connector back to the original support, so now I'm at 200%, the original one that I don't want to open, and it cost me 50 bucks to put in this healthy. Oh, somebody doesn't like it. Oh, 
Why don't you like it? Well, that's a through bolt. Epoxy bolts are, are, are equivalent. What are you connecting it to? Well, I'll show you, I'm going to show all that stuff into, but again, I'm just trying to show you that another alternative to <coughs> repacking or re, uh, reinforcing the original connection, just give it a brand new connection off to the side, okay? We'll talk about plating. We'll talk about putting an angle shelf all the way across and, and the epoxy bolting, all that, and then mechanically fastening it back. There's many alternatives. I'm just trying to say you don't have to spend 250 to 500 bucks per connection to verify a wall connection. You guys are talking about a through bolt that's on wood structures. Most wood structures have the through bolt. All cement structures are buried 8 to 12 inches deep into the masonry back wall. And I'll show you that, okay? But we're cool on this, right? Depending on structural condition. So if somebody spot repairs anything in your city, welds it, changes a few bolts, what are you going to order on them? How do they get away from that load test? <coughs> they just go back to the same structure and do what? To a couple more things. Change the bolts. Right? That will, so, be, that will be on the engineer report to do that, right? Well, we're going to go over that, what the engineer is supposed to be telling. We're just telling what you guys want as a standard. Do you guys want as a standard, based on your fire code, that every spot repaired fire escape in your city will, will require a load test? Is that a safe thing to say? And is it the wrong thing to say? Am I saying something wrong here? Well, that's the safety net. You want the guarantee, right? Guarantee comes at a load test. Nobody gets sued after a load test, right? So you want a load test. Somebody did a spot repair, great, got to go to a load test. They're going to cry to you and say, dude, I, I got a load test price. Dude, $8,000. <laughs> So, well, why don't you take that $8,000 and refurbish it, and there is no load test. Are you pushing load tests? No, I'm not pushing load tests. They're paying the ass. You've got to drag bags around of sand, water, or whatever, and guess who's the guy that's got to put the bag on the thing, and then it may fall or not fall? Yeah, just one more bag, Charlie. <laughs> uh, Charlie, hold off on the bag for a second, because, uh, whoa. So, load testing is not recommended because it's destructive and it's costly and it doesn't buy any paint, it doesn't buy any bolts. One guy just called me while I was on the phone, 3000 5000 just do a load test. Yeah, yeah. But they're waiting for insurance to, to pay them. They got the repair done, but they don't the test. Well, they spot repair. Now, if, they, if you go back to that same guy and say, hey, listen, you instead of load testing with that money, refurbish. Now the life cycle is every 20 to 25 years for the load testing. The load testing is every five years, guys. Every five years. Okay, so, and you guys got the backup of the NFPA. What's the NFPA say? The authority having jurisdiction shall accept by low test or other evidence of strength. So that supports you, doesn't it? What's your building department say? Building department says the same thing. Examine and or test and certify. Is it the certify <coughs> other evidence of strength? So I'll either take a certification, a certified refurbished fire escape, or I'll take a low tested fire escape. Those are my guarantees. Will you ever take an opinion letter that says, to the best of my information, knowledge, and belief, the fire escape is structurally sound today? No, no, no. What does it say you have to, to blow test every fire station? Again, some states, mass, until when that fireman almost got killed, they, they, they had, the law was, you must be maintained at all times. You guys have, in New Jersey, must be maintained at all times. The state comes in, I still haven't found out where it is, and they say you have to uh, inspect the fire escape every five years. Where it's written, I can't find it yet. But so multiple family dwelling regulations. Right. The state of New Jersey inspects buildings. See, this is where I find this stuff out. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the whole tell. building, though, not the fire. They inspect no. the whole building. Part. So there you go. So, it's a five-year cycle. So perfect. So they, they, this is how I find this stuff out. I go to 50 states, and this is sometimes it happens. This NFPA thing, I didn't find it out until two classes after I taught a full NFPA class. It was two classes later in Concord, New Hampshire, that an old guy was in the I'm like, dude, I still don't know where it says that you're supposed to do it. And the guy goes, oh, I have the book right here. And he showed me that. It was like, hallelujah. I said, dude, you know, uh, the authority having jurisdiction. So tell me, the whole building requires well, a five-year inspection. Yeah, right. You all know that the building no. does. Three but I never go to a building like that. Three, 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 three units, units, of, law, to, to three units of law are, anyway. are required to get a green card from the state of New Jersey. The Department of Community Affairs has state housing inspectors that inspect and you pay for that inspection. Part of the requirement under their code would be this. So there you go. You guys are basically sitting on a five-year rule from the state, and you are asking for the certificate on the fire escape in your city, saying, "Where's your five-year uh, five-year certification?" Where's, like your, green, where's, green, where's green. your green card? <coughs> that the state done, has done the inspection, and if I see that green card, 
My assumption is they inspected what their requirements are. I, I get a lot of calls from New Jersey that say, uh, you know, the whole house thing <coughs> violations, and one of them is, which is uh, certify your fire escape. Right. But we don't have anything in our code. That, he's talking about the whole building. But no, three nothing. units are larger in the state of New Jersey. Right, but it says nothing about that the fire escape has to be tested every five years. No, he's saying it's sort of encompassing. It's right. saying You're doing the, the whole, whole building, building has to be done every five but, years. They're looking for certification every five. Thereby, they're looking for a certification every five years on that. No, you're assuming that. No, no, I'm just, I'm just, no. Uh, he no, said it's no, a, no, you're, 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 you're reading into that. I want a six family. You're reading into that. They, according to what, what you're saying, the encompass of the whole building, exterior and interior. Correct. Everything is under the umbrella of that five year. Okay. Because they wanted me to, to, um, to do some work, and I'm like, don't I have the time to say everything is encompassed Building, the whole building is under that five years. Unless there's a complaint from the local authority, that, that, and they it, take jurisdiction. That's us. That's They'll right. take jurisdiction and say, listen, I don't care what the state said. That's they only want the registration money. All right? I, I want the body to fix. But here's what we're doing. But here's the deal. As an inspector, I'm going in and I'm doing the five-year inspection. So I'm doing the inspection and I'm either going to say it's okay or not. There's nothing in the code that says I gotta have another entity come in and, and certify that fire escape which their fire escape every five years. Well you're you're right. You're but what, I'm, into that. what I'm reading in the code it says a fire escape must be maintained at all times. Right. At all times. Right. So that I, I, there could be a, a flaw. You guys well, you guys will wrap it in whatever way you want. I'm not here to That's agree or disagree. That's a means of egress. Huh? That's the means of egress. Right. So all exit it, discharges. Right, so it's in our codes, change chapter nine. Right, so again, guys, I don't want to say that I, I have the answer here. I'm just telling you, and he comes up with a certain piece that says the five well, years is the state green card. It's the same thing when you require yes. an electrician to certify all your hardwired smoke detectors are in working order. You put it on test data from your electrician. The fire prevention does that all the time. The state does it. So if you guys can, and again, this, this is where I come in. These repair and procedures guidelines. This is where I work with somebody like Matt. I said, Matt, give me something that I can write that puts it into your language that basically encompasses everything we just we just beat up on today. Okay. So there's the there's the five. It's the green card rule that basically forces the five year rule of what have you done. So unless the green card rule picks up a fire escape problem or you pick up a fire escape problem, it it's literally every five years there's a there's a look at the entire structure and maybe it'll, the fire escape will get picked up at that time. Or any town or city that has a city ordinance. And that's a maintained at all and times. That's then. what we're working on right now. We're working on five year city ordinance where we're gonna have these tags. Exactly, and they do that. And that's it, when that's if you can't wait for the state. And again, I've been doing this for five years already here. And like you said, we, if you can't wait for the state to trickle down, you basically, and that's why I do these little smaller sessions because it's you get a lot more done this way than a lot of times doing it from the top down. Too many I's to dot and too many T's to cross, and nothing ever gets done. But the local ordinances, you know, bypass this, guys. This is the tag that we came up with. Now, I went out to Seattle to teach a class out there for them. Only Was it preventive or was it after the fact? After the fact. After three guys smoking a cigarette on a fire escape fell and didn't die, but the fire escape ripped from the building. So we brought in, we introduced a confidence test to them. And what is a confidence test? It's a yes, no question. So you have a copy of the, of the confidence test. You go to seattle.gov, you go to their fire prevention, and on their website they have all the all the test documentation you use for sprinklers for alarms da, 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 and they finally put in there fire escapes so if you look at that briefly right now and it's sort of in the middle towards the back see this confidence test when you read it it's uh it's an engineer's worst nightmare it's a final exam it asks you general questions about painting, but then when you get into the structural, one of the key words that it says here is structure exterior, right? All critical materials, connections, and or joints are 100% free of all internal rust or rot. What engineer you know has done a full inspection to guarantee that? And then the last piece, we talk about anchoring devices, number 19. Are the connections of the anchors into the building sufficient to support the required loads as verified by methods acceptable to the structural engineer? Example, did you do an internal inspection, load test, or reinforce or duplicate the connection? Because once you do one of those things, do we have to load test it? No. 
So this, this is how we're going to get around the bad part of the Farscape. So we have a sample that we already gave. If any of these cities would like a, an example of industry standard tags, industry standard in, in, uh, confidence testing, and industry standard um, uh, repairs and procedures guidelines, you know what I'm saying? And this is, uh, we'll, we'll go a little bit further, and I'm going to read you the what's required on the industry standard guidelines. That's the tags. What about all these tags here? Yeah. yeah, those are the tags. They'll show the tags. Let's, let's say you, you mentioned about you condemn, or I mean, or you put a uh, uh, cave out of service. I don't put it out of service. I, put a, I <coughs> go there and inspect and if it's a red one, I'm supposed to, in certain states like California, right. I can't leave the site until I call the captain of the, of the nearest firehouse. He comes down and basically says, okay, you can leave now. And he'll take it from there and basically shut the building down, do a fire watch, whatever he deems necessary. Are you, you monitoring the incident going on now in the Bronx? Right in New York. 12 story high rise just vacated. 20, it took the whole family. Family. Yeah, I, I heard that yesterday, believe it or not. An engineer took all the fire escapes off. That's not the one? That's yes. The one. He was advised by, by, the by, the by the architect. By the architect. That he can take them off. That he can take them off. Because you got two staircases. So now you got 206 uh, families at the big building. <laughs> Right. Well, I mean, there's, there's, there's some bad, let me tell you about why Farscape was on the building. A Farscape was the answer to anything that was a piece of property where you couldn't physically put in two good staircases. You couldn't meet the 75 rules, the 75 foot rule in either direction. So you know what you know how to answer with a Farscape? You got a mansion that you used to live in all, all by yourself with, you know, you and your three kids. You know what you do when you sell that out and you make five condos out of it? You know what the answer is to it? Farscapes. That's the only thing that's ever going to make it work mathematically is a fire escape. So anytime somebody has a structure and there's some dream by the architect or the engineer that they're going to remove the fire, the fire escape and, and make this thing work, I says, no, it's impossible. unless you've gotten the whole building inside and you're going to eat up a lot of valuable real estate that you used to sell as condo space. Now, I, dude, you got to keep this fire escape because that's the only answer to this building because it was done 75 years ago. And there's one more thing coming down your way where you guys get, I get these calls every now and then that says, hey, the fire official says that I don't have to have a fire escape here if I put in a sprinkler system. So that have a means of egress, I mean, my primary and a sprinkler system, I don't need a second. And I'm like, okay, and believe it, it passes in some, in some places. But you know what happens when the insurance company comes in a year later? They say, what's your second means of egress? It's at all, uh, Mary said, I... Uh, Put a sprinkler in, and I spent forty grand putting in. But in some building, there is no place to put a sprinkler. No, no, there is. It's always room for a fire escape. But, but here's the thing: that sprinkler system, the insurance company says, I don't care. I want a fire escape. Like, but the firefighter says, I don't need one. Says, yeah, okay. But we won't insure you. You're a high risk building. So then this poor guy now loses insurance because he took, he didn't put in a fire escape. He put in a sprinkler. And God forbid, there's a water main problem anywhere nearby during a fire on that building because now what does he doesn't have? Doesn't have a shower. You know what I'm saying? So, confidence tests. This is the. This is what keeps the uh, engineers honest. You know, what you um, as long as they have two means of egress, yes. they can eliminate the fire escape. You say? So, yeah. In some cases, if you have a, two internal stairs, right, and it meets the 75 foot rule. Like the one uh, Matt was talking about in New York, did that they? They, they think they did. They thought they did. The architect thought he did. This is sometimes cockiness. This is what happens when people don't call Matt and say, "Hey, Matt, I've got a the building." <laughs> And I think I could take down the fire escape. No, no, because they don't go. They don't. They don't go back to fire prevention. They don't work it out. They don't sit down with you. They don't go nowhere. They don't go nowhere. And they don't suddenly just this, this architect. Says, okay, take it down. I'm good. I'm good. I know the mayor. All of a sudden, boom. Even if it's stairways and not stairwells, where it's fire enclosed, they still would accept that. It's back to it's back to you guys. Meaning, every, everything is an idea. It was built originally the right way for some reason. As soon as somebody that thinks they're smart today think they can just eliminate these things, that's when everybody gets into trouble. Because whenever you do stuff like that, this guy would not have a vacated building if he had in his hands fire prevention sign off to take all the fire escapes down. He'd have also a sign from that building commissioner sign off saying, yes, take it down. If I go to the governor and say, dude, governor, please sign here. Just I'm about to take this fire escape down. Then come back and say, no, and vacate my building. I said, wait a second. He basically put the cart before the horse. He didn't do what permits. Listen, had some bad information. Bad information. And there's another story behind it. He's trying to vacate everybody. Trying to vacate. Sell the property. Uh, sell the property. Uh, vacate it. Oh, oh. And, and make it condo. Who wants the story? He's actually, he's actually, he's actually a hero. He's you're actually probably going to see him be arrested tomorrow, I bet. Tomorrow? Tomorrow. 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 Tom
So uh, here's the best thing that we had. We have the same confidence test. We already gave you guys a copy of a, of a, a confidence test. When you read it, it doesn't talk about anybody. It doesn't break any laws. It just asks standard industry standard questions that should be answered when you're inspecting a sprinkler or an elevator or anything. This standard question. That's all we put in here. Standard questions. So this is not a, a government document, this is an industry standard documentation which is a Firescape inspection related to treads and cantilevers and bolts and supports, that's all it talks about. Now this is the other thing that we liked, when we were in Tacoma, Tacoma added one more and we love this and we made it part of our game plan, they have the yearly checklist. So not only do you have a five year checklist, we have the yearly, you know who does this yearly? And they must ask, they ask, they're asked about the bolts, they're asked about the paint, and they're asked about moving parts. You know who does this one? Every year during your yearly inspections? The maintenance guy, the management company, they all do this. And you know what's the greatest thing about this? On a five-story fire escape with a cantilever at the bottom, and you're coming in for this one year that they sign at the bottom? You know what the best part is on a five-year, on a five-story with a cantilever? No, you say, hey! I'm here for that, that document. Can you, uh, can you walk the fire escape for me? Are you going to walk the fire escape or are they going to walk the fire escape? So this is, includes the gooseneck over to the roof. So what do you tell the maintenance guy to do? He's going to walk over the roof because you're downstairs, right? And he's going to come down over the roof, get on it, feel safe, come down all the stairs, activate the cantilever which is going to drop two to three feet per second and hit the ground. And you just sit down there and says, Looks like it works. Please, tell, me, tell me about a gooseneck. Say what? Tell me, tell me about those gooseneck. <laughs> the roof, the roof, the roof, and one job I did, I got halfway up on it and started pulling back to see the bolt the freaking thing down. <laughs> Here's the tags, guys. This is the tags. And you, you think? No, the like example of it is not there, but I'll, I'll, it was a, a recent uh, addition. But guys, see the tags. Over the next three to five years, all you're going to be doing is putting tags on fire escapes. The only one that puts the white ones on that says there's no deficiencies is fire escape engineers and structural engineers. That's it. But you are not going to change anything that you're doing. You're going to do your normal inspections, and every time you see a fire escape that's all rusted, what do you put on it? If there's dangling treads, as soon as you put it on there, guess what it says? When you read the tags, you know what it says? Who did they contact first? Contact the city official. It's going to have your number and your information on here. Got it? So you're identifying fire escape. You're telling anybody to inspect? You're not telling them to inspect. You're just identifying yellow ones. The process of what they have to do is already on the tag. So you put, you walk around with these and you laminate them in your office. And you just zip tie them to the fire escape. Somebody's going to call you. You do that with sprinklers. You do that with anything else. You guys leave some tags on some of the alarm systems and stuff. Don't you have a tagging process? No, we don't tag. Right. No, we have the uh, our company tag. <coughs> so this is tagging out. This is already happening in Chicago, in uh, Seattle, and in uh, in Tacoma, Portland, Oregon. Already accepted this process. I mean, the fire marshals are doing this. Yes, in Seattle. Every city, every firescape in Seattle needs to have a tag, and their tags is. 17 inches by 9 inches. These tags are 8.5 by 11s. They have these big I'll show you monsters. I'll show you. Yeah, they'll proof? be at every window, right? Excuse me? At every window. Like nope. That, right? 7 to 10 feet off the ground on the fire escape. Permanently affixed to the fire escape. You'll see an example of it, guys. I got photographs of it, what it looks like uh, in Seattle. But while we're here, let's talk about this Department of Procedures and Guidelines, what this was. I was teaching a class. I had inspectors, building inspectors in the class. And I had one of those state building inspectors that monitors the class and offers advice and clarifies. And we were talking about, you know, what do we got to do about ordinances and changing codes and changing codes? We don't have to change anything when you already have the ability to write from your department of what's called the Departmental Procedures and Guidelines. It's a document on your letterhead with your information on it, and it basically tells people how you'd like to see it. You're not changing the code. All you're doing is talking about how you'd like to see it. So can everybody turn to their Departmental Procedures and Guidelines, and we can make an example of one of these for your city. So let's just read. You wrote a violation. I keep picking on Mary because you're, you're, you're representing all the women. Yes. 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 Pick on Mary. In the back corner there. All right, guys. Let's take a look at Department of Procedures and Guidelines. 
do I have it in one hand? I don't know if I can, I don't know if this made the cut. Oh, it does, right, uh, page two, sorry, right at the beginning, guys. From the beginning, one or two pages in, this one. Okay, so what this is gonna say, guys, and I'll read it very quickly for you, it's gonna have your name and your phone number at the top. Doesn't, have, doesn't even have to have National Firescape Association at the top. Have your name and your inspector phone numbers and everything and your address at the top, got it? It's gonna have yours, we'll do this free for you, uh, or we can send you the Word document or the, uh, it's, it's a Word document, and you can modify it yourself. We clip over here your website. So we go to your website, move over to Fire Prevention or Building Department, whichever one's easier, and we just clip that to say, hey, this is how you call in, and this is the people associated with that. In here, and at the bottom, we will put your code, the New Jersey Fire Code, and a lot of times we back it up at the bottom with the, N with the NFPA. Not that the NFPA, it just helps clarify what the code above you is saying. But now, you have this document in your office, you have it emailable, you have it faxable, and you just wrote a violation there. And somebody goes, well, what do I do next? So, well, do you want to come in and get a pamphlet, or do you want me to fax you the pamphlet, or do you want me to mail you the pamphlet? So this pamphlet would say, this is what you're going to tell your engineer to do. This is what you're going to tell your repair vendor to do. And this is what you're going to tell your painter to do if he's not the same repair vendor. So let's start with the inspector. And you guys tell me if I'm breaking the law in what I'm about to say. I'm covering this is for the engineer of record. Structural engineers or others acceptable to the building official. Could be architects, could be firescape engineers, could be fire inspector, firescape inspectors. Otherwise, structural engineers are always acceptable, right? So in layman's terms, the city official, that's you guys, is looking for a registered structural engineer or others qualified and acceptable by the fire and or code official to do a critical examination in lieu of a live load test. Criteria submitted or discussed prior to inspection. So that means if somebody's going to inspect one of your violations, what do you expect to hear from? You expect to hear from that inspector because he's going to call you up and say, hey man, how you doing? I'm calling from ABC Engineering. We do firescape inspections. And issue a written verification and certification that all connections are free of internal rust or rot, as well as the original hardware, square heads and bolts are, or rivets are reinforced or replaced in lieu of a live load test. So this is that thing that we keep talking about. If you're gonna spot repair, I'm gonna go to a load test, but if I can prove to you that we swapped out every bolt, is there a load test coming? All supports through bolts or cemented into the wall must be verified and certified in lieu of a live load test. So if I can verify a connection without duplicating it, will that satisfy you? And I have to document it and photograph it. Will that satisfy the connection into the wall? Okay? A Firescape confidence test and tag must be submitted if Firescape passed. The report with photos identifying violations for, re for repairs must include repair criteria submitted to the official for repair vendor to use as a guide during and with engineer oversight of permitted repairs. So is anything going to happen on that fire escape until the engineer of record and the fire official have chatted a little bit? Is anybody going to do anything? A fire escape confidence test and tags identifying certified condition is, are then submitted. Recommended cycle for load testing is 20 years after a total refurbishment or as required by city official. Meaning you guys can go there and 10 years from now make them do another load test if something occurred that you didn't like. Yes? How much time do you go to get it fixed? You know, if they, they need to get it repaired. It's a great question. Um, with everybody, I'm either poor, uh, under, uh, what do you call it, uh, one of these refinancing deals, I have no money, I just lost my job. Here's what you can do on the fire escape. First of all, can you take the Firescape out of the equation and uh, for about $1,000 to $2,000 a month, can you get a scaffolding company to come in and scaffold the whole side of a building? An average building, three stories, right? And have full good stairs in there with railings and all that stuff and basically they'll kind of put something to a window. We just said that happened on Central Edge, Firescape fallen, we made them remove it, the guy from the company came in, bridged it, Two scissor staircase up to the second first floor, down the staircase. And that's a temporary thing. How long can we do that thousand dollar deal? How long? It lasted about four months. He was a little slow in removing it. No, it's okay, but the scaffolding is an immediate, right? So I don't care how much it's gonna to cost to fix your fire escape. I have an immediate order that we can all scaffold it immediately because you think you're you're not paying attention to this fire escape situation. 
Number two is yes. Can we come in and do a triage on a fire escape? You bet you can. You can walk in and triage a fire escape with you know, uh, you know, uh, rebolting areas that have fallen. You can break bolts that have huge rust and just put new bolts in there. Don't take out the rust, just put in new bolts. And you can have a fire escape emergency repaired, which makes it functional until such time that certified repair work can be done. So that's called an emergency repair. So scaffolding, emergency repairs, and then a game plan with some official that says, you need three months, you need five months, you need a year, because we can work with clients and this is what we do. We would uh, do the emergency repairs and that could buy them one to three months. Then they have to schedule, because. The one that says okay to any plan is the city official, and uh, the authority having jurisdiction. And they say, yeah, you know, they have no money, it's a bad situation, whatever. They're gonna do the repairs over a six month period. So all of a sudden now, you're allowing them to basically drag out the repair process because it's already been secured. <coughs> repaired second over whatever time you give them. If you can get a slumlord that you're gonna give what kind of time to? <laughs> so with little old ladies, you give them that time. And when do you want it painted? Can, would you let the little old lady paint it next year? No. After it's been fully refurbished this year, no money situation. It all depends. Like I say, in the winter time. No, not even winter time. Do you have the courtesy to basically allow an emergency repair, structural repairs over time because it's always safe. You guys all, it's all under a permit, so there's there's always a visual. Let's go verify the situation. <laughs> And then can I paint it next year with your with uh, because I, I'm in a very bad situation? Of course. They would have to apply for Gary and we'll get it approved. Can I fully refurbish and I have that coming up now here in Newark? Can I fully refurbish a fire escape? And if I'm spot repairing it, and then can I push the load test for a year later? I thought you were saying you were fully refurbishing. No, I'm not, not fully, I'm spot repairing it. And then I push the load test over for next year. Well, that's one a company's going to ask that. What's the cost of the expense of replacement? Expense, uh, a typical fire escape that has, let's say, $20,000 worth of repairs, costs you $75,000 to replace it. How much for the first put in the Yeah, that's what I meant. So a typical, uh, let's put it this way. An average, the average repair for a three to five story fire escape with a cantilever at the bottom is going to be 15 to 25 grand. Full repair, paint job, refurb. If you're going to be going for the same fire escape system, three to three to five story fire escape, it's going to be fifty, seventy-five thousand dollars. But you're talking about these old fire escapes, like here in Jersey City, that are fifty or seventy-five years old. Back then, they didn't have the bolts we have now. They were all steel bolts. No. Well, I don't. Know. I don't understand the question. We're going to replace the, bolt, the bolts. Through a bolt. Goes through oh yeah, yeah. I'll come with through bolts. Through, yeah. Through, yeah. I think you guys have a worry about through bolts, but only five percent of the fire escapes you're dealing with, which is the wood structure, have that plate. Everything else is cemented into the, po into the pocket only 8 to 12 inches deep. You guys are going to be amazed a little bit, but I'll cover that. But a lot it's of them are through bolted with a plate on the inside. Right, the wood structures. Right. And brick. Some, very yeah. few. Only only, um, only uh, 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 factories that have the exposed interior walls that they do that. But I'll show you, it's okay. But the, 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 just so you know, you guys know, these things buried 8 to 12 inches deep into masonry, yeah, they're safe. But the great, the, yeah, but the great bolt back then, 50, 75 years ago, don't have the rust inhibitor in it like the newer ones today. You're correct. You are correct. So, but we'll cover that, and that's what the load test is for, is to verify that part. But here's what the tags look like in, in Seattle. Here's what it looks like. 7 to 10 feet off the ground, permanently affixed to the fire escape. And that's a white one. You care to. You, you don't have to read that running down the alleyway, do you? You just have to know as a fireman that a white tag means what? It's okay. Here's what our tag looks like, and here's the information. And from the ground, can you read when the next inspection date is? Do you know who inspected it, who, who repaired it, and all the licenses and all the phone numbers associated with that situation? Do you have to go back to the office and find this information out? Or do you know exactly when the next inspection date is? Huh? The red ones, they just ripped them all off. Well, you already have, the red ones, they already have other other focus on them anyway. Guys, this is a tower, and it's kind of funny. I got a call two days ago about this tower that I inspected five years ago, three years ago. This is a training tower, and when I went to inspect it, I knocked down all these shreds on a training tower that they were using every day. Your training towers have this kind of problem. Just recently, I got a call two days ago. They, the chief has sw swapped out, and a new guy uh, called me two days ago. And he says, Cisco, uh, yeah, Car Chief Cardillo is no longer here. And one of my guys fell through the fire escape. I said, what do you mean, that fire escape that I shut down three years ago that you guys didn't have money to fix? 
well, they had somebody come in and fix it, and, and the tread that fell was the tread just before the ones that they fixed. So, uh, Maybe they were really training you. <laughs> they want me to go back, but look, look at all that rust in the connections. These are all the treads I, I knocked out with a hammer test. Remember that simple hammer test? They fixed all those, and then they put the, it back into training. And the guy just fell through it again. Did you send out your reports to the, to the fire department? Excuse me? You, when, you, when you do an inspection, do you send them to the fire department? Do you want me to send it to you? Yeah. Okay. Because in some states they say we can't send reports to you unless you ask for them. Are you asking for a report? Yeah. Okay, so then, yes, we always send it to you. Because you think my owner is going to let me send you something? No. Oh. But you know what I tell them every time I walk into any building and this is what's required, before anybody goes and inspects anything in your city, who are they supposed to call? City official. Matt, you want reports? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I, I have to give the report, otherwise they'll yank my license. So usually they're getting, you're going to give us a report based on us doing our inspection saying, hey, paint, straight, repair. Right. As a matter of fact, in Seattle, you have to send them a pass and a fail report. So every time I inspect, I'm supposed to send out a form, pass or fail. If it fails, I'm supposed to send them a copy of the report, not just passing ones, fail ones, I gotta send him a copy. Well, and I can't make a plan until I speak with him because he can't pull a permit with the building department until we come up with a plan and to know which what's the V in the road. And are they going prepare, spot repair I and with low test? I'd rather have a fail report oh, yeah. given to you so I can take action on it. But yeah. after you give them a report, they're not gonna say, okay, our fire's can't fail, it's not a fire yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. As a matter of fact, if there's a life safety issue, this is the kind of stuff we ask. If there's a life safety issue, you want me to stand there until you arrive? Because that's my license in, in California. If I don't do that, I lose my license. So in California, I have a life safety issue. I got to call the captain of the of the closest fire fire uh, fire station. <coughs> I got to wait there until the guy shows up. Then then he just takes over. I have to say anything. They said, "Dude, broken tread. I got to go." Because I, I got another inspection to go to. No, all they can do is call fire police, but they don't have a clue. No, no, that, that's their job. Their job is to basically now shut down the building because it has that or do issue a fire watch or, or to make basically push the guy into the next step. So this is funny that this guy just called me a couple days. How much rust we got here, guys? Right? Yeah, this is on a, a soldier's home, a veteran soldier's home. These are the fire escapes on them. So the war didn't kill him. Guess what's going to get him? All right? Look how much rust is in these connections. It took him three years to finally get the funding to fix that. Three years. What's going on here, guys? Smashes and grabs and, and such. Now these things happen all the time. Trash trucks, cement trucks. All right, this is our hammer test. Three pound hammer, simple three pound hammer, right? This is a city hall. See the missing treads? This is a great one. We had a, a school that called us to replace a fire escape. Facilities guy called us and said, dude, I've got a, a kindergarten through eighth grade. This fire escape is ready to hurt something. So it wasn't the fire department, it wasn't the building department, it wasn't a violation. The facility guy said, dude, this is the stairs that kids use every day to go to class. I mean, go to recess. One story, second story down. I went there when I did the inspection. This had so much rust in it that I actually saved it. Very rare do I get to save pieces of a fire escape. And I used this section of the fire escape I used it in a class on January 26th of this year. It was a show and tell. I actually had it physically in the room. So we had 100 inspectors in the room and I said, guys, and I showed you all the wrong ways to fix a fire escape. So we actually took it and we showed you every wrong way you could ever fix a fire escape that people are doing now, including welding the treads from above, you know, that, that clip above. See all the rock, because it, it was into the dirt, you know, of the schoolyard. Look, look how much rust is here, and look, look how much rust is sitting in there. So we, we, we basically took this and we brought it in as a model so we can show all the wrong ways. See, weld it from underneath. See, quick little weld there. See, this is typical, you know. See the original hardware? I got rust in the connection. You bring the welding guy and he welds the nose. That's it. Now that tread ain't going anywhere for about six months. But as it grows in rust, what happens to the weld? Rips it and it falls, right? So these are temper this is what you get for a band-aid. They quickly paint over this, and then what happens? Can't see it. Can't see it. But you see any original hardware on the fire escape, what are you going to automatically order? Well, Depending on the structural condition, and you saw what? 
square bolts. Are you what? Uh, is it, uh, what do you call it? Is it suspect? You see a square bolt on, the, on a structure. Is it suspect? Yep. You want a guarantee and you get a guarantee doing what? I don't want to do the load test. I don't have any money. Change the bolt. Can I change the bolt and keep the rust? Or if you put a new one in, like you double. Remember what you were saying? You could put another one in just like it. Yeah, I'm going to do that. That's the cement under the wall. But right now, can I leave rust in the connection and change the bolt? No. And if they do, what are you going to order? Both of us. Right? You, you got that load test, which is thousands of dollars, to say, dude, I don't want to write you fines and fees, but the load test is going to screw you. basically wasted their money changing them out because they're going to end up... You have to open them up, get all the rust out, silicone shut it, put it back in. Ready? So, show you the next piece, right? That's what you guys have been doing for 50 to 75 years here. You see a welding truck underneath the fire escape. Does the EPA even allow that? Does he have a fire permit? When's the last time you saw a fire escape repair permit, fire escape fire permit? Never. See, here in Jersey City, we issue a one time, they're registered as a life hazard use, the welding company. And the welding company, if they do work outside of their business, they get a once a year welding permit and they can spot weld. Oh my God. And we do, I mean, we do I spot those. check them and say, let me see a permit. Yeah. 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 This, is the, this is the structure. I was able to save it because it was a pain in the ass. Because we just, we just needed to demo this thing. But I saved the top and I saved the bottom. And we did a full repair to show what the proper repair is. But look, we were able to basically use it now as a uh, uh, show and tell piece of all the wrong ways to fix fire escapes. Okay? This is the old one in the schoolyard. I took it out the 719th. I only had so many days before the kids came back on the 3rd of January. And that's the new one right there. We actually made it go to the right and off to the side. See it? You guys see it? Remember the kids at the detention center? If doing drugs don't kill you, won't kill you? So this is considered a fire escape too, right here? Yep. <coughs> all exit discharges. Okay. All exterior steel wooden stairs must be inspected. We're only touching fire escapes now, but you guys, the code says, all exit discharges. That's everything that's outside that's not covered and protected from weather it must be examined under 1028.6. We're not even there yet. You guys are going to start on fire escapes, but then you're going to have more. Of, it's going to the green card situation is going to pick up all these others. Some catwalks. Catwalks. I'm going to cover that right now. Right. So from now on, when you inspect the fire escape, you ever going to get on it? Nope. Can you see everything you need to see from the ground looking up? Yep. Can you open a window and look out yep. and see if there's any evidence of maintenance? Yep. Do you need to physically step on it? Nope. Okay? Otherwise, bring yourself a little three pound hammer and do what? And what I'll do now is like I'll do my resin. Thorough inspectors, bring your hammer with you. If you don't ever want to step on these things from the ground, look up at a two-story or a twenty-story. Everything that's going on with that fire escape is in the first two levels anyway. It only gets worse as the weather goes up higher. Everything you're gonna, you don't need to walk these anymore. Okay, guys, Rutgers, Rutgers University, New Brunswick. Have you ever seen a fireman pole fire escape? Now I have. Oh, I got more. Anybody ever seen a, a slidescape? No. Ever seen a slidescape? I'm going to show you a slidescape that's going to blow your mind. I've never, I, I inspect nationwide. But I've never seen a fireman pole. So now, if you're ever going to have a fireman pole fire escape, shouldn't you have it at a college where everybody drinks? <laughs> and not just one, we should have a double. Every <laughs> It could be a dead, but it, it, you know, it could be, it could have multiple it use, have but right now it's get out in case of, you know, a raid or anything. And there's a slide pole here for a fire escape. Maybe that's where our deputy man gets it. Never saw one, but in case you're looking at an opportunity for a fire, a firehouse escape system, you know, you guys are used to this anyway. That's the Brunswick. That's New Brunswick. That's Rutgers University. They're not operational, right? Yeah, it's just operational, yeah, dude. This is recent. Yeah, this is recent. 
bottom, the bottom of it, you got to make sure that the grass is cut. No, no, you just, you, no, you, no, you fall on other students down below. They'll push in your boat. They're going to have a race. Who's the first guy you're saying? Yeah, the first guy who's going to jump on. You can go. You like it? I find some crazy stuff out there. I got more. Guys, the main thing that's here, right? Fire escapes are made, they're supposed to be for self-evacuation of the tenants, and they're supposed to be for an emergency use by your firemen who only need to use it to get in the building, or in case all hell breaks loose to get out. So, back to this thing. Why did this happen? But right now, firefighters are taking down the ladders and rolling up the hoses, but earlier in the night when they pulled up, there were flames coming out of the side of the building. Firefighters say it was one of the scarier moments because when you pull up to a building and you see children and mothers hanging off the side of the fire escape, smoke swirling around them, they said that's scary, scary stuff. They got up there, they got the ladders up, and they said nobody got hurt. The uh, fire escape, there was uh, three or four people hanging off the fire escape. They couldn't get off. They were just on the fire escapes. I had people hanging in the fire escapes at the rear of the building. And on this side of the building, they, we had a bunch of people on that fire escape. Well, about 50 people were displaced inside this building. Our firefighters say there's good news tonight. It looks like everybody will be allowed to go back in except the one unit where the fire was in. They said that's good luck to them tonight. I'm Bob Wilson on the scene of Bridgeport, News 8. Yes, sir. A fire escape is going to always work. It's always going to work because it's supposed to be for self evacuation. When it don't work, you got a rescue mission eating up valuable minutes that's going to kill people. What was the problem? I don't get it. Well, the ladder, the ladder, the ladder wasn't coming down. The ladder wasn't coming down. It wasn't the one that changed. But then, the if the ladder's not coming down, there's still this child that says, I'm going to die here. The child gets on this ladder, or the mom put the child on the ladder and said, you know, Is there any training? You ever train your kid on a ladder? And then, how do you jump 12 feet? It doesn't matter if it's a vacant building, they still got to be taken care of, right? Yeah. The Otherwise, system. the building has to be identified as a, as a, a hazard. It has to be maintained. The vacant has to be registered with Mark Slovis vacant building, then this fire escape has to be chained up and it's going to go so vagrants can't get into it. Well, not only that, we've had that, well, that's a very good question. On a vacant building, basically what happens, whenever you have a, uh, the second, third, fourth, and fifth, they, you basically have to have signage that says fire escape is uh, non-functional. That building becomes a surround and drown building. You don't go in to fight that, that fire. And whenever you have a docu uh, some sort of documentation that says this is a surround and drown building, what happens to the insurance of that building? Drops. That fire escape, even if it's a vacant building, that fire escape has to be fully functioning now for the firemen to get in right, and get that's out. What I was thinking. So no vacant building can ever have a non-functioning fire escape. Oh, we also required that the, the, all the systems work to be vacant. The reason we're talking about in here is just because a lot of the downtowns, they're still making money on the first floor, but nobody can make any money on the second floors and up. And as you know, national trend is, you guys are going to see this, either these buildings are going to come down completely or every one of these second and upper floors are going to become all residential, which is what's happening everywhere in the country. The second, third, fifth, and twentieth floors, they're all becoming, you know, these lofts and stuff, and that's what's bringing people back to the downtown. Otherwise, they got to knock the building down. You're saying that you can't chain the ladder up in a vacant building, the fire escape ladder, uh, in a vacant uh, property? Again, here, here's, the, here's the issue. The fire escape is supposed to be fully functional. You can't chain the ladder because I have what's called a release arm up there. A release arm lets me release the fire escape ladder. It'll drop two to three feet per second by itself and hit the ground. Right. Cantilevers have release arms that lock them into position so they can't be pulled down by vagrants. You don't chain them. You have release mechanisms put on them so that nobody can pull them down and get access to the building. Right. right. That well, entire fire escape must be fully functional. To be able to operate the ladder of it, is that what you're saying? Say again? You still, it, it has to be operable a lot of Yeah, it must be single in. action requiring no special knowledge. Locks are not single action. So these, these ladders or cantilevers would get a release mechanism put on them that are, you can't monkey with them down from down below. <coughs> and so now what happens is there's a fire in the building and the whole fire escape system is certified. A fireman puts his ladder up against the thing, climbs up and then releases the cantilever. It comes down now, the Got whole it. fire department is using it. No chains. The way, we're, the way we're doing it now on a vacant building, I believe I just got a list off the market. Is we got over a thousand of them. The city has secured them, bought them up, utilities off, water's off, everything's off. If they have a fire escape, we put it up and we chain it. 
And what we do as a fire department response, if we have a fire to put a ladder up to it, cut the chain, now we use it. Yeah, but you're talking about surrounded ground because a lot of those oh, buildings, you're not going to go in and right, fight it exactly. anyway. Most of them are You just said you put a ladder up to the building. I mean, it's not a surrounding ground. No, no, he's just going, that's, he, that's if, what they wanted to use the fire escape for. They want to use the fire escape. We right. put the chain up to keep everybody out. But like you said, the latches aren't there. They just grab it, pull them yeah. down, we'll have vapors back in them. If we need to use that fire escape after no, the yeah. city chains it, we'll just cut the chain and now we'll use Right, it. but I'm the, I'm the owner of that building. Normally what happens when you chain it up, you're going to put a sign that says the fire escape is non-functional. A big ass sign that says well, the fire escape is non-functional. we're going to chain it up. You as the owner, you're going to be in court with either housing and us. No, I know. I know. I'm just trying to help you guys to say if the di if the fire escape is identified as a non-functional fire escape, who does that help? The fire. During a fire. They're going to come in and surround and drown this building. That's it. Right. What we're saying is off all of a sudden say, no, 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 no. I want to keep my insurance, you know, whatever. Then we got to put a proper latch on the release arm. The whole fire escape must be structurally sound, not necessarily painted. As long as it's structurally sound, then we can work with that owner in a, in a long-term plan about what's going on with the rest of that vacant building. But chaining it up, when you chain it up, you also have to identify that the fire escape is a non-functional fire escape. So there must be, you guys have that sign, a big sign with a, with well, a line. We, we paint it on the building. Yeah, yeah. Full so the right there and then it's a surrounding ground situation. Nobody's going in that building anyway. Nobody's going to use the fire escape. But uh, this is what we're worried about there. Remember, the old guys tell the new guys, in case of fire, don't use the. But after now, Guys, let's go into the building, ready? Not many people know this, but all fire escapes. This is the veneer. The veneer goes into the wall, the masonry wall is usually eight, 12, 18 inches thick. It's usually made up of one, I mean of two, three courses of brick with an outside beautiful veneer. So here's your outside beautiful veneer, and here's your dirty bricks on the inside making up the masonry walk wall. Every fire escape in the United States is only buried 8 to 12 inches deep into that. That's it. And I'll show you photographs of it. But basically, they go into the building or into the wall. But what happens is a lot of people don't realize, and I'll show you on this photograph, there's a little bit of a three-quarter gap between the veneer and the masonry block wall. When you got a parapet wall leaking all year, all its life, where do you think that eats the iron? Behind the veneer. Sometimes you're going to get stains, we call them dragon's teeth or dragon <coughs> tears coming out of the rust, of rusty tears coming out of the side of a building. That's an indicator that there's water inside getting out. So this is what the load test will verify. If you load test a fire escape that has bad connections, guess what you're going to have on the ground? No, a fire escape. That's what the load test will prove. But if we do a proper investigative uh, uh, inspection, I'm supposed to verify this because I'm supposed to let you know the unknown. I don't have x-ray visions, but I have other ways to verify that these connections are good. But I need $250 to $500 per connection to do exactly this. Or I let sleeping dogs lie, and five inches away, plus minus, I drill a new epoxy bolt that goes through the veneer, and it goes through the uh, wall, and I, and I make sure that it's a good wall inside, obviously, and I epoxy bolt it with a healthy bolt and I mechanically fasten it back. Here's another one that we recently did where the veneer was open, and look what we found. Now a load test on this will cause what kind of problem? A fire escape will go to the ground when you load test it, okay? So even though the steel outside the building looks great, what's it look like inside the building? It takes 75 years for this to go. You see what this is? This is us <coughs> verifying a connection. I take a drill with a three-quarter drill on it, and next to the steel, I drill all the way down. And what do I get to see when I put in that little probe? I get to see what kind of material.